Hi, um, my name is Shang Lin. And today I will uh, like to first thank the organizers for inviting me uh, to give this presentation. My talk will be on DNA sequencing using nanopores and kinetic proofreading. Uh, I work uh, at Brown University. Um, first, uh, my employer, uh, Brown University uh, official, has told me to make a uh, full disclosure of my work uh, and then how uh, the work might be related to uh, uh, other places, especially uh, related to China. Um, so uh, my work uh, originally in Nanapur started in 2002 when I received a Guggenheim Fellowship. Um, uh, my work, my sabbatical work was done in Technical University of Delft in collaboration with Kess Decker's group. Um, uh, when I came back to Brown in 2003 and I re received a grant in 2004 uh, from uh, a National Science Foundation and the National Institute of Health. Um, so this work uh, went on for several years to 2012. Uh, and then in 2012, um, I, Unfortunately, NIH did not continue to fund my research in nanopores, and I uh, was fortunate to have a donation from the Yan and the uh, Lu family uh, to Brown um, that uh, allowed us to continue some activity. You know, from 2005, uh, 15 to 2018, I uh, received a China 1000 Talent Plan Award for uh, which allowed me to work in Nanjing, China. I took a sabbatical there. Um, and then uh, in two, uh, 2018 to 2020, the work is mostly done as a, I, I did as a consultant for Nanjing Road Island Nanotech and Jara Inc., which is now based in Suzhou, China. So I uh, located the, uh, the three places on the map here, Delft, uh, Brown, which is in Providence, and then and Nanjing, the Suzhou in China. Um, so uh, what got me interested was the paper by John Cassiano with, and then uh, Dan Brenton. And what did they propose that was a very, interesting idea that uh, what they found was that um, for alpha hemolysin nanopore, which is a very narrow pore, which allows uh, only single-stranded DNA or RNA molecule to go through. So this is a plot they showed that shows ionic current as a function of time when the uh, uh, RNA molecule is added here. And then if you blow up each uh, event, you see that they have um, uh, a, a, a width, which tells you that there are um, uh, this ionic current level might be related to the size of the uh, the molecule. So this gives them the idea, which was also a pattern, um, that the idea is to uh, sequence DNA using the nanopores. So the idea is to, as the single strand DNA is put through a pore. And then uh, uh, somehow if you can make the pore so small in such a way that you can sense one nucleotide at a time, uh, which turns out to be extremely challenging. And then nevertheless, what are the dream of is a, a signal like this you see, this is not a real signal. This is a, a hand draws uh, desired signal. The idea is maybe uh, one can distinguish from one nucleotide from the three by their translocation time, and then uh, the, uh, the T and G from the size, from the ionic current. So that, that's the idea, okay? So the idea is um, somehow one can uh, uh, extract a spatial arrangement of a nucleotide uh, from the temporal information of the ionic current, okay? But it turns out um, after 20 years, now we understand that um, what it really needs to be done is to build something like a solid state DNA polymerase. And the basic physics in it, it turns out, was actually worked out by Erwin Schrodinger 
uh, back in 1915, 100 years ago. Um, so um, the, the, the physics, um, uh, w w I will discuss very quickly, uh, very uh, soon, but let me very, uh, very quickly go over Sanger's method. Uh, that's uh, a Nobel Prize work. It was invented in 1976, but it received the Nobel Prize in 1980, so very quick. This technique was uh, uh, um, uh, very um, uh, price worthy. Okay, so the idea was the f following, um, he, but at that time it was already understood that the, the DNA structure was soft about Watson and the Creek, um, and, uh, and then uh, 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 Franklin. Um, so um, the a DNA is a double helix structure, and then the nucleosides are spaced at uh, uh, 0.4 uh, nanometer apart. So because of it's so close, so it's very hard to measure directly. And then the the chemistry, the the uh, between the, the four nucleotides, uh, they're also very close to each other. The structure, uh, the composition, atomic composition, are very similar. Uh, the different by, they differ by a few atoms. The main difference is that between AT there are two hydrogen bonds, between GNC there are three hydrogen bonds. Okay. So the idea is then how do you distinguish the um, uh, discriminator between the nucleotides and then distinguish their position? So that's the challenge. And what the Sanger and the Gilbert at the time uh, you had a similar idea was that that um, they can uh, uh, take advantage of the fact that the DNA uh, replication is done by DNA polymerase uh, acting as a polymer as a, 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 um, a, um, a, a, a as a, a help for um, a, um, a, as a, a catalyst to um, trigger the, uh, the chemical reaction in such a way that this, uh, uh, you, you will break this uh, covalent bond or attach to the three prime oxygen of the, of the, of the end of the um, DNA. Okay. Um, and then because the, you have a, a hydroxyl group on the three prime end of, of every, a nucleotide, then this can keep on going. Okay. So, have you understood this in the mid 70s? And then what Sanger uh, proposal was that by uh, making a dideoxy by removing the three prime oxygen, and, and then one will terminate the chemical reaction. So, in other words, one, if you know what you are putting here, then you can terminate this. A chemical reaction without actually having to do a measurement. So this is the clever idea that allows Sanger to invent this DNA sequencing technology everyone knows in this field that um, uh, for uh, four different um, uh, uh, reservoirs, you have uh, the first reservoir, you have a, a dideoxy for T, the second one you have dideoxy for C, this third one you have dideoxy for G, and then last one you have dideoxy for A. And then because you know where the chemical reaction is terminated and how they got into this uh, growing strand is uh, uh, by chance. And then and after you you do the uh, few cycles of PCR, you melt them off and then run them through gel, you can separate them, okay? Then because you know in which reservoir you have which kind of a, uh, Dideoxy uh, in that reservoir, then you can you can um, read off uh, the uh, uh, DNA sequence this way. Okay, so then uh, later it was made a little bit fancier, but the basic idea is the same, and you can see that it's a perfect match. Um, um, so uh, so it's a perfect match here. Okay, so the that, that's the idea. Okay. And then the, of course, then everyone knows that uh, to do um, uh, whole genome sequencing would be uh, too difficult. And then, so what the Selexa invented was to turn this three prime dideoxy um, uh, termination 
and into a reversible termination. In other words, they can terminate and then they can add a, um, they can cleave off the blocker and allow uh, this to continue. Okay, so, and then later was the technique was modified by Helicos, modified by PacBio, and then many other companies. Um, but it, this is the basic idea. And the key in this um, DNA sequencing technology is the DNA polymerase. Okay. So, uh, uh, because DNA polymerase uh, can cut, uh, catalyze the chemical reaction that attach a, a nucleotide, a new nucleotide. And then furthermore, um, the uh, DNA polymerase has the catalytic, has the uh, exonucleus activity that will cleave off uh, any base that's incorrect. So this is a proofreading mechanism um, that allows the uh, DNA replication to have high fidelity. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go over this very quickly. This is still a very costly operation. And then, so what a nanopore DNA sequencing uh, 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 can offer potentially, if it works, the only cost would be electric electricity bill, right? Because the uh, uh, if the reagents can be uh, reusable, uh, unlike in the in case of Sanger or the second generation, the, those reagents cannot be reused, then then the main cost will be electricity. So that would mean that there is a potential um, for uh, making this most expensive part of the uh, uh, genetic testing to be free. Okay. So in principle, it can work, but it, it, it turns out it's not as simple as Brenti envision. So um, th th this is the main story of this talk is that um, uh, what you have heard uh, from other people may not be the whole story. So I'm going to tell you the whole story. Okay? So the problem lies in the second law of thermodynamics, which no one can avoid. Okay, so the, the idea in, in the uh, nanopore sequencing by John Cassianowitz and then Brenton et al. was that you can turn this time information into uh, a spatial information measurement. Okay, so for example, this DNA going through, and then you can measure the time of the passage. So that allows you to measure the length. So, that, so that's a conversion of time to length, okay? But it turns out that because of Brownian motion, and then you, this DNA going through the pore can be understood as the pore walking on the DNA. So I'm gonna make this pore in the little man, a random walker walks on the DNA. So at time t equals zero, I know where the, the, the random walker is, but as a function of time, this rock, random walker will diffuse and I will lose in information. And then this was actually uh, seen very early on in the work of Axon and others. And then for example, if you look at the, the, uh, the RNA translocation time, it, you get a very broad distribution here, okay? So this distribution of uh, uh, DNA translocation time was a big issue in, in the field. It was carefully looked at by Zhao Li and the coworkers. Um, and then, so this is the beautiful data taken by Zhao Li using solid state and nanopores, okay, which is a very, very similar of the uh, uh, a, a broadening of the translocation time. And then everyone by then, uh, by the uh, last uh, 10 years ago, started to pay attention that there has to be a way to suppress diffusion. And so, so people, uh, for example, the Washington group and uh, in Oxford, they added a, a molecular motor here. And then basically is essentially to suppress diffusion this way. And then they start to see some information they believe and then I'm convinced there are some uh, useful information, but it should be noted that these current steps are not really individual bases because every time there are several bases going through at the same time. Okay, so in fact, if you, that's what people think, there are five bases effectively going through the alpha hemolysing for at the same time, then there are 1,024 possible ionic current levels, which turns out to form a continuous distribution. So, so then the 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 uh, the Oxford nanopore and the others, and then they proposed the uh, uh, 
directly and by using the ionic current and then using some statistical modeling to guess what a sequence is. Okay, so, so they, uh, Oxford has put up a product of this, but I would argue that this is fundamentally a flawed idea because you, you can't really have, uh, uh, there are too many um, uncertainties in the model. And it, it very much your, your sequence information you get will be model dependent, uh, whatever you model you put for the, uh, for you think the ionic current should depend, uh, should be distributed. Uh, so so th it is highly um, uh, desirable to have, to, to go back and then to ask, is it possible to build a nanopore DNA sequencing machine that has the, or capture the original Sanger uh, uh, used uh, uh, DNA polymerase. In other words, it can control diffusion um, uh, in, a, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the DNA polymerase during the DNA replication, but it can also do kinetic proofread. So this is the idea that I propose. Okay. So the answer is yes, you can do it. And then, and, and, and let me explain to you as a matter of principle why this is doable. First, the question is, the, this diffusion, I said, you cannot avoid. The question is, can this be understood and then therefore can be solved? The answer is yes, even though we cannot control, uh, 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 we do not know the probability distribution of the random marker, but it turns out that we can solve for the first passage of probability. This problem, in fact, was solved exactly by Erwin Schrodinger in 1915 when he solved it for, uh, um, at that time, the big issue was about the electrons. Okay, So that was about the Millikan experiment, and there was a debate about uh, the, the distribution function of the, the um, uh, each uh, Brownian particle that going through the, uh, the field of view in the um, uh, 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 electrical field of driven motion um, uh, experiment. Um, uh. So what Schrodinger uh, arrived at is an exact solution for the, uh, for the this first passage time distribution. This turns out to be a really big deal. It's just that the people forgot for, for many decades. Okay. What we find is that uh, by taking Schrodinger's uh, solution, just re reinterpret the diffusion constant, we get exactly the same solution. Okay. So this is Schrodinger's derivation. This is exactly the distribution function. And then it turns out that this distribution function fits a, a, a uh, Jolly Lee's data perfectly, and and then so so basically um, uh, uh, we have now uh, uh, an understanding of Brownian motion uh, of electrical field driven motion of DNA in in nanopores. Now having this function, why so important? Because then it allows us, for example, if we have a situation where we have two um, uh, markers on a, let's say, either single strand or double strand DNA, but then differ by the amount of delta X uh, with the spacing of X. The question is, can you actually, actually discriminate between these two? Okay. The answer is uh, yes. Um, and, and then the question is how? Okay. So, so if you calculate the mean first passage time from this, when these two uh, uh, probes that are passing through the pore, and that's just the length divided by velocity. This L is X, okay? And then if you calculate the second moment, and then you get this, this is the exact expression, okay? These two are not approximations, okay? So using this tool, you can define a rigorous criteria for DNA sequencing, which basically says that the change of the mean should be larger than the variance, which is the standard way to distinguish uh, um, fluctuating quantities. Okay. So it turns out if you put in the, um, the Schrodinger's expression for the uh, first passage time distribution, you get uh, this expression. In other words, in order for you to distinguish delta x, this delta x better be larger than the square root of 2d x over uh, uh, v. What this says is in the time of travel, the diffusion uh, uh, length scale should be less than the spacing between of them. Okay, 
So this is a criteria which turns out to be identical to what Sanger used for uh, his work on the um, uh, uh, DNA sequencing by using joy UF preferences. In, in his case, his separation is as, as a function of distance. So he put in the, uh, the field in the band and then watch as a function of the space. They just wait a long time because the separation between the band and separates uh, grows with time, but uh, the broadening of each band only grows as a square root of time. So if you wait a long enough time, they will always separate, okay? So the separation in space in, in, in um, Sanger's method is essentially what do we do in nanopores. In other words, that uh, we can separate a, um, a, 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 a this space is um, a, as long as the separation is larger as long this delta x as long as larger than two dt. Okay, so this is the um, uh, is the same as this. Okay, so the separation is larger. So when 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 the separation is larger than broadening, and then you can separate. Okay, but before you cannot separate. Okay? So, so this is the same mechanism physically as a matter of physics principle. If we want to design a DNA sequencing machine, okay, so we have to turn this Schrodinger, what I call the Schrodinger's criteria for DNA sequencing into something that we can control. One is the velocity, the other is spacing, okay. And the D is the diffusion constant, delta X basically is the one nucleotide spacing. Okay. So, so if we plot into this working phase diagram, the Schrodinger uh, inequality basically says that half of the space is blocked by diffusion. Okay. So then the other half is also not fully available to us because one part is controlled by pore length. The other one is controlled by bandwidth of the electronics, which cannot be too fast. Okay, so so basically, then our window is pretty reduced. Now, if we put into real parameters of the uh, a, a nanopores, the best nanopore we can make with this technology, and then the uh, free DNA trans uh, diffusion constant. We arrive at this red line, which basically says that the, the window that I explained in the previous window does not exist. Why? Because the, the, everything below this red line is dominated by diffusion. And yet our best nanopore we can make is about one nanometer or 10 nanometer thick, okay? So which means then uh, a, 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 Everything on the left hand side of vertical dash line is blocked by the by the physical size of the uh, of the pore, and then the horizontal two horizontal lines. One is the faster electronics, the other one is the slower electronics, which is more readily available commercially. Okay, and then so in order for us to create a window, basically, then we have really uh, not much uh, uh, we can do except by brute force. Okay, so we have to figure out a way to reduce diffusion of the, uh, the DNA diffusion inside the nanopore by three order magnitude from this red line to this black line. So then you can open up a window like this. If you have faster electronics, you can open a bigger window, okay? So this will be our design uh, window for a machine. And so, uh, solving this position of the problem is only half of the technology. The other half is to discriminate between the bases. Okay. So the, the, oh, there was an idea that I proposed earlier with uh, uh, Barry Brady and Alexander's personages in 2005, 15 years ago, and uh, which was based on Edwin Southern's idea of 1975, the idea is, um, you use a, a hybridizing oligonucleotide to just to, to identify the bases. And the, the nanopores is just to tell you where they are. Okay. But 
it turns out, uh, okay, so this is uh, the basic idea. And then, um, uh, yes, uh, 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 former postdoc at Brown, Venkat Bala Kusami, actually did an experiment and the proof that, that this is indeed possible. So the paper was published in, in, in nanotechnology. I urge you to read it. And the, the author, the first author is Venkat uh, Bala uh, Kusami. Um, uh, so, the idea, uh, the, 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 the bottom line is, yes, we can actually distinguish uh, the, um, uh, the hybridization event uh, in a molecule, okay? And then, and then the, there is a problem with uh, uh, the previous design, that is, uh, the previous design was 12 mer. So 12 mer, the uh, library size uh, would be 4 to 12, which is more than uh, 12 million. Okay, so that's too big. Um, so we have to work with smaller uh, uh, oligonucleotides, shorter. Okay, so so even for uh, six mers, 4 to 6 is 4,096. Uh, this is still uh, a, a large number for nanopore measurement. So if we have to measure 4,000 times, that would be too big. Uh, what I would uh, prefer is to, to do it with two mer or three mers, which is about what we can measure, the smallest we can measure about 1.2 nanometers. And then the library size is 64. And then by using a real genetic sequence of a, a, a virus, you, you can see that the three mer spacing are pretty much manageable by nanopores. So this is all promising, okay. However, we know that at a room temperature, the three mer or two mers are not stable uh, because they will melt um, pretty much below six mers, they will melt um, the, uh, uh, in the final time. Okay, so, so then this, uh, hybridization and dehybridization process or, or uh, on and off rate can be described by a first order rate equation which contains a on process and an off process, okay? So that can be written as a, be described as a probe and a substrate and with two rate parameters, K1 and K2, okay? And then the on rate is about the same for a, 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 a correct and the incorrect ones. And, but the off rate should differ by a, a lot, a, a big difference because um, uh, the, uh, this is controlled by the binding energy. It's a thermally activated process. So it, there's exponential dependence on the binding energy. Okay. So if you do the equilibrium uh, consideration, you find that this is still quite a large error rate. Um, so this is still not acceptable. Um, basically, the, the, the lesson here is we need to, to figure out a way to do proofreading. Um, so the proofreading uh, uh, idea uh, I propose is the following, is that um, uh, and so if we, uh, have a single stranded DNA with a three more hybridized to it. And this is inside a nanobore. And then we can see when it's coming in, uh, is coming on, when it's coming off. Okay, so so what are, the idea is if we can watch, we can measure after for every event, we watch how long does it take for you to, to come off. Then we can uh, rewrite the first order rate equation with only uh, one off term, okay? So this would say that the, the probability of the hybridization uh, uh, decays with time exponentially, both a correct or incorrect probe. The difference is that the correct one has a longer uh, lifetime, okay? One man said, well, what's the big deal of that? The big deal is that uh, if you take a log scale of the uh, uh, probability, you'll find that if you do a second step, that allows you to have a dramatic improvement in accuracy. In fact, with a little waiting time, um, uh, longer waiting time, you can get a 10 orders of magnitude uh, 
uh, uh, suppression in error rate. So, so this will rival the best DNA polymerase uh, that's, that can be found in nature. So, so the bottom line is in principle, men can make a man-made device that will rival the best nature uh, evolved um, uh, 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 DNA polymerases that can be found in nature. Okay? And then so I'm giving you uh, a quick uh, run of the latest progress in building this machine. And yes, you can see this uh, translocation event. You can see the hybridization probe. Um, so we're designing the machine to perform the function we want. We can pull the DNA molecule inside the nanopore back and forth. You can find those events. Here, the current is reversed. So the other uh, dip is uh, shows up as a peak and for convenience here. Okay, And it's noisier because the setup is still not optimized. So this work was done by a, a, a Nanjing, Rhode Island a company, a startup company in China, a help started. Um, so the basic idea is illustrated in this picture. You can pause the video to, to do a quick look. The, the first prototype has been built by this company in China, um, uh, Nanjing uh, Road, um, uh, Rhode Island Nanopore, uh, Nano Technology Company. This is the team, uh, led by uh, Dr. Hu and um, and his uh, his uh, teammates um, in China. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank uh, all my uh, collaborators, from Cass Decker uh, to uh, the current collaborator Hong Wen Wu and the Chishan Yuan and the NGR team and, the, and the, all the uh, funding resources. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>